sisters and brothers, please put your hands together for very on Bishop for the collective the service ever saw it. Amen. Amen. Just keep your hands. God is good. Blessings and favor upon the people of God. I believe something supernatural is happening. Glory to God. God is turning things around. God is shifting things. Glory to God. We give honor to God who is the head of our lives, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who is God, our comforter and keeper. Amen. We honor Elder and Lady Mitchell in the house. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a of praise. Amen. I honor my wonderful, beautiful wife, Lady Campbell. Amen. 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 It's good to see the saints of God in the house. Amen. Amen. I have a treat for you today. I'm not ministering. No, you're fine. You know, you're fine. Amen. Men, I want to share this with you before the men of God come. Amen. My daughter and I, amen, were attacking our body yesterday. Glory to God. And uh, she, she always abundant me. And when she uh, began to get attacked, and, uh, I guess the thing hit me. And, um, and as I was in bed, even wrestling through the night, I was so weak, so tired. My wife, she hardly ever see me really sick. And so she said, I don't know if he's playing or he's. <laughs> but I was really going through it my body. But I thank God that even through the time I was going through it my body, God was ministering to me. And God has given me a word. I'm going to release it just to prophesy it over your lives. Amen. It's very vital that you hold on to God and trust God in this season. Come on, glory to God. Your faithfulness will pay off. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So many times we look at the attacks that we're going through and we take our eyes off God and we sink into depression, to worry, to stress. But that's why we have to keep our eyes on God and stay in the face of God. Hallelujah. If God had moved, don't you move. Oh, glory to God. Wait on him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, when you wait on God, there's a word that comes into play called expect to see. When you expect, you will see. If you are expecting, means that you are about to give birth. Oh, and that's why it seems like it's been so hard for you to work through some stuff because God is only trying to birth something through you. All right. I feel the glory of God in the house. My God. Hallelujah. 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 The man of God has a word. And as I was sitting at my desk, he came in and the Lord said, let him speak. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is going to do something. God, tell your neighbor, God is going to transition me from one place to another. He's going to move me, get this from here to there. Hallelujah. He's going to move me, get this from, from, from good to better. Hallelujah. He's going to move me from great to greater. Hallelujah. He's going to move me from higher, higher to higher. Pay him a God is going to elevate us today. Everybody rest on your feet. Hallelujah. It's an honor to present this man of God. Amen. Asking him to come in his own way. The Bible said we have the same spirit in many administrations, yeah. different operations. Yeah. Glory to God. And I know that he has a word that God wants to release it to his people today. Amen. Let's give it up for Prophet Chunk. Amen. Yeah. Give him a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Elder Mitchell and Lady Mitchell and to all God's children. 
As always, it's another day's journey. Amen. I don't know how you feel, but I'm mighty glad about it. Uh, anytime I have opportunity to speak or speak a word for the Lord, I'm always appreciative and I'm always excited. This is from one on me. I didn't know you were going to get there. <laughs> the Bible says, be you also ready. Uh, there is a sermon I've had for a while. I just haven't had a chance to preach and just ask God move. So, those of you who have your Bibles, there is a word in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 16. Come on with you. All right. Uh, There's a small story I want to look at. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 and uh, through verse 11. Come on. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 in the six through the first part of verse 11. And when you find it, will you let me know by saying amen? amen. It says, and I'm reading from the New King James, it says, now when they had gone through Fergia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. So after they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And a man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Right. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Therefore, they loose from Troas. Uh, the, uh, well, let me see here. The Bible says in verse 7 that they tried to go into Bithynia, but basically, the Holy Spirit closed the door. Come on, Because he would not permit them to go in. Come on, So with that in mind, I want to preach from the subject, coping with closing doors. Reach out. Coping with closing doors. Coping with closing doors. And if you would, just leave me your amens. I'm not going to be long. Come on, One of the things that I find fascinating about God is his ability and his capacity concerning doors. Come on, if you look at the book of Revelation, John, the writer of Revelation, says when he wrote when when he was writing to the church of Philadelphia, concerning God, he said God has the capacity to open doors no man can close, but by that same capacity he has the ability to close doors no man can open. I'm gonna say it again. In the book of Revelation. And when he was writing to the church in Philadelphia concerning God, he said, God has the ability to open doors. Come on, no man can close, but by that same power and capacity, he has the ability to close doors. Come on, yeah. No right. man can open. Come on. And the thing that I find interesting, if God has the ability and the capacity and the wherewithal to close doors, it would suggest to me not every closed door in your life, in my life, is a result of the devil. Sometimes the reason why you have closed doors in your life is a result of the devil. And what do you do when the reason why doors close? The reason why you were shut out? The reason why you rejected, the reason why you were denied was not because of the devil, but the reason why you were denied was because of God. How do you deal with those? So we're going to talk about coping with closing doors. And if you don't believe that God has the capacity and the word was all to close doors. Hang out with me a little while as we look at this story in chapter 16 of the book of Acts. Because we see how God deliberately, purposefully, and blatantly closed the doors on Paul and his companions. In verse 6, the Bible says they are traveling through Phrygia and the region of Galatia. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit forbids them from going into Asia. Come on, Richard. I'm going to say it again. The Bible says they are traveling through Phrygia and the region of Galatia. Come on, yeah. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit forbids them from going into Asia. That's right, huh? I'm going to say it one more time because I need you to see the picture of the text. They are traveling through Phrygia and the region of Galatia. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit forbids them on, from going yeah. into Asia. Yeah. The reason why that's important, if you look at the map, you will understand that Phrygia and Galatia are parts of Asia. 
So they are already traveling through Asia. So Asia is all around them, but God tells them they are forbidden to go into Asia. So it seems to me that the scripture is tailored to teach me a truth. Not everything that you're around, God will you in. Just because you're around it, don't mean God wants you in it. Because if you look at the text, they are traveling through Phrygia and Galatia. That's already, they're already in Asia. Asia is all around them. And God has the, the, the God says, I don't want you to enter in. So here in the text, they have Asia around them, but God don't want them in them. So can I suggest to you that Texas taken to teach me everything that's approachable is not appropriate. Everything that is approachable is not appropriate. Because there are sometimes there are some opportunities that are approachable. But just because they're approachable does not mean they're appropriate. Another way of looking at it is this. Everything that is accessible, God don't want you access. Everything that is accessible, God don't want you access. If you allow me to testify for a little while, one of the things that has troubled me and has bothered me as God has prepared me and crafted me for ministry is he's had me go through a season of solitude and loneliness. Come on, I'm going to say it again. Come One on. of the things that has troubled me and bothered me is as God has prepared me for ministry, he's had me go through a season of solitude and being by myself. Come on, now, I think I have to let you know, just because I've been in the season doesn't mean I haven't had opportunity. On, it doesn't mean some opportunities have not come my way. Come on, but God had to let me understand everything that is accessible I don't want your access. Wow. See, you have to understand every presented opportunity is not considered opportunity. Come on, oh, I wish I had somebody. Come on, I'm saying it again. Yeah. Every presented opportunity Come is on. not considered opportunity. Right. Everything that, that shows up in front of you does not mean it is uh, considered by God. Come on, There's yeah. some women that might show up in front of you, Preacher. but just because it's presented does not mean it's considered. Right. There are some men that might show their face in front of you. But just because it's presented does not mean it's considered. Yeah. Every presented opportunity yeah, is a considered opportunity. Yeah. In other words, everything that you're around, God don't want you in. Here in the text, the Bible says they try to get into Bithynia, but the Bible says the Holy Spirit suffers them not to enter. I'm going to say it again. The Bible says they try to get into Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit suffers them not to enter. The one thing I want to look at is that clause, suffer them not. If you look at that clause in the Greek, it carries a connotation of withholding a person from a thing. Yes, sir. I'm going to say it again. That clause, suffer them not to enter. If you look at that clause in the Greek, it carries a connotation of withholding a person from a thing. Uh -huh. So the text is trying to teach us sometimes the reason why doors close is not to keep stuff out. Come on, preacher. Sometimes God closes the door to keep me out. Yeah. Oh, say, say. Yeah. Sometimes the reason why doors close in your life is not to keep things out. Come on, sometimes God closes the door to keep you out. Come on, See, some of you shot over stuff God let you do. Yeah. But the reason why I shot over stuff God didn't let me do. Because God, if you let me do some things, I might be 60 If God let me do some things, I might be dead by now. If God let me do some things, I might have a case by now. If God let me do some things, I might be incarcerated by now. Sometimes the reason why doors close is not to keep some stuff out. Sometimes it's keep me out. Yes, Sometimes there's some things I wanted to do. And it wasn't necessarily right by God. But sometimes God has to close doors, not just to keep stuff out. But sometimes he has to close doors to keep me out. So now the question lingers. Why would God close doors? What is God's rationale? What is the reason why God will close doors in your life and my life? Well, I'm glad you asked. I got four points I'm going to give you. And after these four points, I'm going to wave at y'all. <laughs> so four reasons. If you allow me to extract and pull from the text, I believe there's four reasons that God closes doors in my, your life and my life. The first reason sometimes God closes doors, sometimes God closes doors to challenge you. Yeah. Second reason, sometimes God closes doors to chamber you. Preacher. Third reason, sometimes God closes doors to channel you. 
Come on. And the fourth reason sometimes God closes doors to Charlie. I'm going to say it again. First reason sometimes God closes doors to challenge you. Second, sometimes he closes doors to chamber you. Third, sometimes he closes doors to channel you. And fourth, sometimes he closes doors to charter you. Let me work these four points and I'm going to bid y'all adieu. First of all, sometimes God closes doors to challenge you. If you look at the nature of the word challenge, it means to test. Yeah. And let's look at the text. The Bible says God had already told them no concerning Asia, correct? But the Bible says they still tried to go into Bithynia, which is another portion of Asia. So the thing you see in the text, they had a desire to go into Asia. So the first challenge of the text is this. Can you give up your Asia? Can you give up your Asia? Then you got to understand what Asia represents. Now keep in mind, they were told no concerning Asia. But they still tried to go into Bithynia, which is another part of Asia. So their desire is Asia. So Asia, when I tell you you got to sacrifice to give up your Asia, Asia is the thing you want for you that God don't want for you. My God. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say it again. Can you give up your Asia? Asia is the thing you want for you that God don't want for you. My God. What do you do when you want that man? My God. But that's not something God wants for you. Come on here. What do you do when you want that job? But that's not the job God wants for you. What do you do when you want that career? But that's not the career God wants for you. What do you do when you want the woman? But that's not the opportunity God wants for you. Can you give up your agent? Can you give up the thing you want for you that God don't want for you? Can I suggest to you that's a challenge? But also let me show you why it's a challenge. If you read the text, the Bible says in verse 6, they are traveling through Phrygia and Galatia, correct? So they have spent time roaming through Asia. So in other words, they have spent a little time with Asia. They have put a little energy into Asia. They have put a little effort into Asia. And whenever you don't put your energy into something, whenever you don't put your work and your effort into something, it's hard to sacrifice something that you don't put some time into. Come on. And sometimes you got to give up the very thing you don't put some time and effort into. Can't you sacrifice your Asia? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Yeah, you preach it, man. Asia. Giving up Asia is the thing you want for you that God don't want for you. Second thing in the text is can you, how do you deal with being blocked despite giving your best? Hallelujah. Second challenge. How do you deal with being blocked despite giving your best? Look at the text. The Bible says they are saved. If, in, if you have the, new, the King James Version, the Bible says they are saved to get into the video. Now, if you look at the word saved, it means to do your best to get in. In other words, they did everything they could to get in, but God, they, God would let them so they were blocked. And so how do you deal with with being blocked despite giving your best. How do you deal with being rejected? How do you deal with being unwanted despite giving your best efforts? How do you deal with being denied despite giving your best efforts? How do you deal with being blocked despite giving your best? Can I suggest to you that's a challenge? But I also see a third challenge in the text. When you look at the text, the Bible says they tried to get in Bithynia, but something happened that wouldn't allow them to be received. I'm going to say it again. They're trying to get in Bithynia, but the text don't say, don't say what really they just said God told them not. But something happened seemingly that denied their interest that wouldn't allow them to be received. So the third challenge I want to pose to you, what do you do when the thing you want, God won't let it want you back? <laughs> what do you do when the thing you want, God won't let it want you back? Because here it is, they're trying their best to get into the Come on. They want to get there. But something happened that would not allow them to be seen. So what do you do when the thing you want, God won't let you go back? How do you deal with closed doors? So sometimes God closes doors to challenge you. And so the word challenge means to test. Second point, not only does God close doors to challenge you, but sometimes he closes doors to chamber. Yes, yes. Now, when you look at the word chamber, the word chamber means to enclose. Yes. So by nature, the word chamber means to cover. Mm -hmm. And I need to suggest to you, sometimes God is closing doors oh, 
to cover you. Sometimes the reason why some doors are closed and shut in your life is God is trying to chamber and close or cover you. Let's look at the text. The Bible says God had already told them no concerning Asia. But the folk in this text are a lot like the folk in church. Yeah. Even though God told them no, they decided they're going to try it anyway. I'm saying again, God had already told them no concerning Asia, because the Bible says they were forbidden. But even though God had told them no, the Bible said God that they still tried it a second time. Can I pause right here and throw this in? If God told you no the first time, Come on, preacher. Don't make no talk to me. If God told you no the first time, if you ask God concerning that same thing a lot the answer's still going to be done. Yeah. Oh, if God told you no, that wasn't no hurt the first time. If God told you no, that wasn't your wife the first time. If God told you no, that opportunity wasn't for you the first time. If God told you no, that job wasn't right for you the first time. If God told you no the first time. Concerning the same thing on another occasion, the answer is still going to be no. Come on, Lord. The Bible says they tried to get into Bithynia, but they found out the answer was still no. But I need to suggest to you that God was covering them. Because here it is, you see, they were disobedient to God's initial answer. And I need to suggest to you the consequence for being disobedient is you run into Bithynia. Come on here. I'm going to say it again. They were trying to get into Bithynia, but the Bible says the hope and spirit blocked them. He would not let them enter. Come on they were actually being disobedient when they tried to go into Bithynia. Yes, and I need to suggest to you the consequence for being disobedient to God's initial answer of no is you run the risk of running into Bithynia. Now, the reason why that don't mean anything to you, because you don't know what Bithynia means. Come on, come on. But let me educate you on what Bithynia come means. On. If you look up Bithynia in the Greek, you will find where Bithynia actually means violent rushing or violent precipitation. Come on, yes, sir. So in essence, Bithynia actually means hostile, violent, and aggressive storm. Yes, sir. Here it is, they are being disobedient. Yes. And the Bible says they are headed to a Bithynia. Bithynia means hostile, aggressive storm. And while they are in the midst of being hit, about to be hit by a storm, the Bible says God steps in and blocks it. Sometimes the reason why doors close is because God is trying to cover you from being hit by a storm. They are being disobedient with their disobedience. Headed for Bithynia. Yeah. Don't even know they're about to get hit by a storm. But the Bible says God still seeing them blocks. How many times have you been headed for your within? You know God told you no. You know God told you don't do that. But you Let's look at the text. 
The Bible says, look at, look at what the Bible says concerning Mizio. If I believe if you look at verse 7 compared to verse 8, there is a vast contrast concerning Mizio. If you look at verse 7 concerning Mizio, the Bible says they came to Mizio, correct? Mm -hmm. right. Verse 8 says they bypassed Mizio. Uh -huh. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Verse 7 says they came to Mizio. Yeah. Yeah. One verse later, the Bible says they bypassed Mizio. Yeah. So the Bible suggests there are some things that you come to you need to bypass. Yeah. I'm going yeah. yeah. to say it again. Yeah. There are some things you come to that are worth being bypassed. Come on, preacher. So considering in the Bible, where the Bible says in verse 7, they came to Mizzy. But one verse later, the Bible said they bypassed Mizzy. Yeah. I had to ask the question, what was it about Mizzy that made them bypass? So I had to go to God. And I looked up Mizzy in the Greek, and I have to admit, Bishop, I was thrown. Because when you look at Mizzy in the Greek, Mizzy means actually land of beech trees. So in other words, Mizzy was supposedly a beech land. Now, if you know anything about the compadres on the ship, they were men. And out of all the places these men bypassed, they bypassed the beach. I was troubled at that. I can't understand. <laughs> because out of all the places men would bypass, they would bypass Missy. They would bypass Meech Land. Because the thing I understand about the beach, they got beautiful water on the beach. Yes. Got beautiful sand on the beach. Uh -huh. And they also got beautiful specimens walking around <laughs> on the beach. But I can't understand. <laughs> I can understand out of all the places these men bypass, why would they bypass Missy or Beach Land? But God had me knows, had me understand something. Just because it was a beach land does not mean it was a blessed land. So you then you have to understand everything that looked good to you. And good for you. Everything that you and go. And everything that makes your heart go clear and ain't all that.
taking that, that horse in the open, they let their gates up and they bring that horse into the camp and they let the gates down. Greece acted like they were going off as if they conceded uh, defeat. Late in the night while everybody was asleep, even though that horse was beautiful on the outside, what you need to know was on the inside of that horse. There were Greece soldiers that were hidden on the inside of that horse. And they let up that horse and they came out and let up the gates. And the army that had pretended to go away came back and they overthrew Troy. And so I was asking God, God, what is the revelation behind it? He said, look at the story again. Well, when you look at the story, they had that horse in the open. And that horse in the open, they let up their gates. And that horse in the open, they brought it to the camp. Can I suggest to you, everything that's open ain't meant to be an option. Come on, here. Come on, come on. Everything that's open ain't meant to be an option. There are some women that are open. No, they ain't gonna talk to you. But everything that's open ain't meant to be an option. There are some opportunities that might come open, but everything that's open ain't meant to be an option. So when you look at the text, they had to bypass Mysium, they had to go past Troas, and the Bible says God gave them Macedonia. I'm gonna say it again. They had to bypass Mysium. They had to go past Troas before God gave them Macedonia. Can I suggest to you, sometimes God will make you learn how to bypass your misery. Come on. Go past your Troas before he give you your Macedonia. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes God will make you learn how to bypass misery. Get your release from Troas and before he give you Macedonia. Now let me tell you what Macedonia means. If you look at the word Macedonia in the Greek, it actually means extended land. Yes, Lord. It actually means extended land. Now look at the text. God took them from Asia where they were being rejected or they experienced expulsion and they're going to land in Macedonia where God is going to expand them. In other words, sometimes God is closing doors because he's trying to expand your territory. You see what I mean? Sometimes the reason why God is closing doors because he's leading you to a more open and broader place. And you sit up and cry because you were denied at your age not knowing God has Macedonia waiting on you. Preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So when you look at the text, the rejection was just the redirection. The rejection in this text was just the redirection. So sometimes God closes doors because he's trying to challenge or test you. Sometimes God closes doors because he's trying to chamber or cover you. Sometimes God closes doors because he's trying to channel or direct you. But fourthly, sometimes God is closing doors because he's trying to charter you. Now, when you look at the word charter, the word charter has a unique definition. The word charter actually means to reserve for private use. See, when you look at the word charter, the things you charter, you charter a plane. You charter a bus. You, 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 you charter a limo. And so the nature of the word charter means God got you on reserve. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes the reason why doors are closed because God got you on reserve. If you know anything about making dinner reservations, when you are have a reserved table, can't nobody, can't any and everybody just sit down at your table. Because that table is on reserve. And you're wondering why some stuff passed you by. Could it be a possibility? God got you on reserve. And there was some situation God said, no, not you, not you, not you, not you. Because God recognized he's reserving you for something better. Another way of looking at charter is God had them on standby for something special. Yes. I'll just say it again. Sometimes charter suggests they be on standby for something special. Let's look at the text, and I'm going to holler at y'all. I'm going to go. <laughs> when you look at the text, God really had them on standby for something special. Let's look at it. When you look at the text, the Bible says they were uh, rejected, they were forbidden in Asia. When you look at the text, they had to bypass misery. When you look at the text, they had to loose from Troas. So when you look at the text, they are facing constant rejection. They are facing constant resistance. They are facing constant opposition. And sometimes when you're facing constant resistance, you're facing constant rejection. You're facing constant opposition. You have a tendency to get down on yourself. You have a tendency to think God done forgot about you. You have a tendency to think God done left you. But little did they know, God had them on standby. Bring something special. The Bible says late one night, possibly while everybody was asleep, God came to Paul in a dream. And in that dream, there was a vision. And the Bible says there was a man in Macedonia said,
saying, we need you to come on and help us. Yeah. The Bible said after they got that vision, the Bible said Paul said, we're going to head down to Macedonia. Come on. The Bible said when they went down to Macedonia, they stopped at Philippi. Oh, yeah. And they went down by the riverside. And while they were down by the riverside, the Bible said they began preaching. Uh -huh. And the Bible said while they were talking about the Lord, a rich woman by the name of Lydia Come showed on. up. Yeah. So the Bible said she was a seller of purple. And if you know anything about the color of purple, purple is the color of royalty. Purple is the color of kings and queens. The Bible said they met up with a woman by the name of Lydia. The Bible said Lydia had heard the word of the Lord. And her and our household got saved. And the Bible said the thing that blessed me, after Lydia and our household got saved, Lydia said, Paul, I want you and your crew to stay in my house. Come on, here. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Come on. Again. Yes, sir. He said, Paul, I want you and your crew to stay in my house. Yes, Here's the blessing. When the text started out, they were on the ship. Come on, yeah. When the text ended, they were in a suite. Don't tell me God don't know how to upgrade you. Don't tell me God don't know how to upgrade you. And when it really comes down to it, 
They can't come through. Come on, lift your hands. I can feel people in here frustrated, frustrated with your job situation, but hear me. When you are waiting on God, you have to be in a posture of expectancy. Waiting is not being lazy. Oh, God help us. Waiting is not sitting down, twiddling your thumbs, hoping. Waiting is fasting, praying, sowing into the lives of others. Because get this. Some things we've said and said, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be, this and that. But when God said the time is up, the time is up. And when God closed that door, get this, he always has a greater door open. Remember when Peter was in prison and they had to get this four quadrants of soldiers. He had two that was chained beside him, chained to him. Get this. And the church made prayer without ceasing. Y'all better get this. In the middle of night, an angel smokes him on the hip and tells him to get up. Get this, his chains and everything falls, falls off of him. And they walk and he follows the angel. Get this. And the Bible said they get to the outer gate and the gate open on his own accord. When God, get this, is telling you to do something and you're doing what God is telling you to do, you don't have to do nothing except obey. Come on, your friends. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. A powerful thing the man of God said. Doors, they let things in, they also let things out. That's right. Ah, glory to God. And sometimes when the enemy, we get to the door and the enemy has a door open for us and we go through that door, we let stuff out. Come on here. Valuable things. That are treasure. Dear God, dear to God. Come on, lift your hands. Glory to God. There's a shift that's going to take place in our lives. I don't know about y'all, but I'm expecting God to do something in here today. Anybody tired of waiting? Come on here. You get frustrated, you get aggravated, you're easily irritated. Glory to God. When you first started out, you was all excited, but now you're down, broken, busted, and disgusted. You hardly can even deal with yourself. You sure can't deal with no one else. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to come today. God want to minister to you. God is going to bless people with jobs greater than they can ever imagine. He's going to bring an increase. There's a transference. Glory to God. A wealth that's coming upon God's people. Oh. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody over here. Yeah. Come on, lift your hands. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, saints of God. Prophet Chuck, I want you to come down with me. Elder Mitchell, y'all come down. Glory to God. I want to say something to you. I can't remember if it was about two months ago, a month and a half ago, God gave. He 